so we have to apply these formula there is no new formula there is no new concept over here the thing is we have to understand the question in a good way and then we have to apply these formulas along with uh, understanding of hello everyone i am rakesh nath and i am a faculty of csat in pluto science academy so today in the short video we will discussing a very important topic of csat mensuration so this is a topic where you can expect almost 6 to 12 question every year of csat so this is a very basic topic here the thing is we have to apply uh, concepts of different uh, aspect of mathematics and we have to come, come up with the answer in this topic so what we will do over here is we will discuss some basic formulas that we will be requiring in solving the questions related to mensuration and then after that we will discuss some previous year question that has been asked in the question paper so this is a very uh, simple topic a easy topic and a very good scoring topic so let's start for today's session so these are some basic formulas of mensuration so it is expected but ye sab to we have studied in from class 8 to class 12 everyone has studied this thing uh, i have put in this slide so for the revision purposes only so i expect every one of us should be knowing this formula we will just go through this once so the first will be these are the 2d figures these are the parameters and areas with regard to the 2d figures so the first figure we have is a square so perimeter of the square is 4a and area of the square is a square where a is the length of the square and for circle with radius r its perimeter is 2 pi r and its area is pi r square for rectangle where the length is l and breadth is represented by b breadth or width whatever you say so the area there will be l into b and perimeter is 2 l plus b for triangle uh, here specifically for triangle here we have taking the lengths are as a b and c and h is a height of the triangle height of the triangle in the sense i'll draw over here a triangle let's say this is the triangle abc so this is small a this is small b and this is small c these small abc represent length of the three sides of the triangle and uh, let us imagine we take base this bc as base and if we draw a perpendicular from this vertex a from the bc then the length of this perpendicular this length is represented by the small h right the length of the perpendicular so here we are saying the perimeter of the triangle is simply the addition the sum of the three lengths <coughs> three uh, lengths of the three edges of the triangle and here area of the triangle will be half base into height here we are taking base as this length uh, bc and area of this length is small a and height is the length of the altitude length of the altitude length of the uh, perpendicular that we are following from this vertex a on our base bc right so area will be half a into h that is what i have written over here the perimeter is simply the sum of the sides and the area of the triangle is half base into pi for a right angle triangle here right angle triangle is simply a triangle where one of the angle is 90 degrees yeah so let us take this uh, this side as base of the triangle and then this length of the this side is b and length of this perpendicular is h then we can say and this is a hypotenuse hypotenuse then what we are saying over here is the perimeter of this triangle will be the addition of the yeah, the sum of the length of the triangle and length of the triangle here are this small b small h and the hypotenuse this is what we have written over here and area of the triangle is half base into height very similar thing for similarly for uh, equilateral triangle equilateral triangle here all the three sides of the triangle are equal and all the three angles are also equal and all the three angles is equal to 60 degrees and let us a represent let uh, let imagine this a represent the length of the side of a triangle so here the perimeter is 3a obviously uh, exactly the same thing as we have done for the triangle the perimeter is the sum of the sides of the triangle and all the sides are equal to a so the perimeter for an equilateral triangle will be 3a 
and the area of an equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 under root 3 by 4 a square right this is the area of the triangle and for rhombus this is the area and this is the perimeter of the triangle similarly for parallelogram and trapezoid right these are the perimeter and area of the triangle area of uh, different figures uh, which are in the domain of two dimensional figures and similarly for these are the figures in the domain of three dimensional figures so in three dimensional figure we have volume we have curved surface area and we have a total surface area so for cube we know all the six all the edges of the cube are equal so if we take the length of all the edges equal and that will be let us imagine the length of all the edges here are a then this is the uh, volume of the tri uh, this cube this is the curved surface area of the cube and this is the total surface area of the cube similarly for this thing cone cylinder hemisphere cuboid and sphere these are the formula for volume curved surface area and total surface area just for imagine let us take cylinder so in cylinder what we have given over here is we have a base circle and this radius of the circle is r and height of this cylinder is h right so volume of the cylinder will be pi r square the surface area of the base of the uh, this thing cylinder and multiplied by the height of the cylinder pi r square h this will be the volume of our cylinder for curved surface area of the cylinder the curved surface area will be the uh, the surface area of the circular part of the cylinder ignoring the base uh, and the top of the cylinder which is a circle so ignoring these two circles the curved surface area will be the same uh, this uh, circumference of the circle the circumference of the perimeter that is 2 pi r multiplied by the height of the cylinder that is circumference that is 2 pi r into h this will be the curved surface area of the cylinder and total surface area will be the curved surface area 2 pi r h plus the area of the base and the top of the cylinder that is the area of the two circles and the area of circle here is pi r square so we have taking it 2 pi r square 1 pi r square for base of the circle base of the cylinder and another pi r square for the top of the cylinder we have two circles here right similarly this is for sphere this is for cone this is for cuboid this is this is what we have done in class 8 class 10 this is a very basic elementary thing right so we have to apply these formula there is no new formula there is no new concept over here the thing is we have to understand the question in a good way and then we have to apply these formulas along with uh, understanding of some other topics so let us start previous questions after discussing previous question we will understand how to do the questions here so this is the first question this was asked in 2016 csat paper of 2016 it is saying a piece of tin is in form of rectangle having length of 12 cm and width of 8 cm it is used to construct a closed cube the side of the cube is okay I'll repeat the question. A piece of tin is in form of rectangle having length of 12 cm and width of 8 cm. This is used to construct a closed cube. The side of the cube is. So it's a very simple question. It is asking we have a rectangular sheet of cube, uh, tin with dimensions of 12 cross 8. The length of the sheet is 12 cm and width of the uh, sheet is 8 cm. Then we have to mold this uh, two dimensional sheet into a cube. And the question is asking what will be the side of the cube? So here, what we'll be using? Here, we will be using the surface area. Right? The surface area of the tin sheet or the tin used in the cube will exactly be the same. So we have to equate the surface area of the provided sheet with the surface area of the new cube that we will be forming. So let us imagine, let us take, this is a very simple question. Let us take A be the side, A be the side of the cube, right? So surface area of cube will be, we just now have studied the formula for surface area of cube is 6a square. Surface area of cube will be 6a square. And initially the, the tin was in piece, uh, the tin was in shape of a rectangular sheet. So surface area of tin sheet will be the area of this rectangle and area of the rectangle is length into its width. Now we know that the tin, uh, tin is exactly the same and there is no loss of tin while converting it from rectangle to a cube. So the surface area of our initial tin sheet 
and the surface area of the final cube that we have formed from this sheet, that two sur these two surface area will exactly be the same. So what we can do here is we have to equate the surface area of the sheet with the surface area of the cube. And here we have one single variable that is the uh, length of the cube, right? So when we equate this thing, 12 into a is equal to 6a square. Then we can easily say that cancelling this 6 from this thing, this will be 4, this will be 4. a is equal to a square is equal to 4 into 4 or a is equal to 4, right? A very simple question. So the final thing they, were, they, they are asking about the side of the cube. And we have imagined let a be the length of the cube. So the side length of the cube is answer is C that is four centimeter. This is a very simple question. I'll explain what we have done. So it is saying we have a piece of tin in uh, form of a rectangular sheet with dimensions of 12 cross eight. Then we are converting this sheet into a closed cube and we have to find the uh, side length of the cube. So what we have done over here is we have uh, calculated the this area or the surface area of the sheet in form uh, surface area of the tin in form of sheet that is 12 into 8 and then we have equated this with the surface area of the final cube that we are forming and the surface area of the cube is 6a square where a is the length of the cube then we know that the surface area of the this thing final sheet final this cube and the sheet is exactly the same so we have equated this surface area of the cylinder surface area of the rectangle with the surface area of the cube that is 12 into 8 is equal to 6a square and after solving this simple equation we have got to the final solution that is a is equal to 4. So this is our solution. Next question. So this is a question this was asked in 2016 only. So I'll read the question. A cylindrical overhead tank of radius 2 cm and height of 7 meter is to be filled from an underground tank of size 5 in 5.5 cross 4 cross 6. How much portion of the underground tank is still filled with water after filling the overhead tank completely? So this is again a very simple question. So what it is saying is we have two different tanks. We have uh, this cubical ta cuboidal tank and we have a cylindrical tank. Right. So initially the cuboidal tank was completely filled with water. Then what we have done is we have extracted some water from here and we have transferred this water to this cylindrical tank. Now we have to find how much portion of this uh, cuboidal tank is still filled with water. A very simple question. This question will only, uh, this question we here in this question, we only need the volume of this cuboid and the volume of the cylinder. So we need to find what percent or uh, what uh, what share of the cuboid is still filled with water after filling the uh, cylindrical thing so what we have to find over is final volume of water final volume of water left after filling cylinder upon volume of cuboid this is what we have to find right and the final volume of water is simply the volume of the cuboid the initial water that is uh, that this cuboid is holding minus the volume of the cylinder because this is the water loss right so the final volume of water here will be the volume of this cuboid i'll write it over here the final volume is volume of cuboid minus volume of cylinder so this will be the final remaining water still remaining in the cuboid upon the volume of cuboid the initial total volume of cuboid so this will be the share of water that will be remaining in the cuboid after we have filled this cylindrical after we have filled this cylindrical tank so volume of our cuboid is now putting the values and volume of cuboid is l into b into h and volume of a cylinder is pi r square h we know this thing right where r is the radius of cylinder and h is the height of the cylinder so it is a very simple question here we have to find volume of cuboid minus volume of cylinder 
upon volume of cylinder and volume of cuboid is 5.5 into 4 into 6 into 4 into 6 minus 22 by 7 into radius square into height radius is 2 and height is 7 2 square into 7 upon the initial volume of a cuboid so we just have to solve this thing right after solving this thing we will get what percent of the cuboid is still filled with water so this is a very simple thing this is 2 square So it is 55 by 10 into 4 into 6 minus 22 by 7 into 2 into 2 into 7 upon. So solving this equation, this is a very simple equation. This will be cancelling 5 both the side. So this will be 11, this will be 2. Cancelling 7 by 7 and here also this will be 11, this will be 2. Finally, we are left with 11 into 2 into 6 minus 22 into 2 into 2 upon 11 into 2 into 6. So cancelling 11 in the whole equation in numerator and denominator, we are left with 2 into 6 minus 2 into 2 into 2 upon 2 into 6. Right. Now solving this thing further, we can write cancelling 2, 2 and 2, we'll get right 6 minus 4 upon 6, that is 2 upon 6, that is 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 is the ratio, the our cube order tank is still filled with water. So the answer of our question is 1 by 3. Right. So the answer here is A, 1 by 3. This was again extremely simple question. So it was saying we have two different uh, tanks. One is in shape of cuboid and another is a shape of cylinder. So what we have done over here is we have filled the uh, cuboid tank with complete water. Then we have transferred the amount, some amount of water into the cylindrical tank. And we have to find what ratio, what percent of this cuboid tank is still filled with water. So what we have done here is it is an extremely simple thing. We have taken volume of cuboid minus volume of the cylinder. Minus volume of the cylinder. So volume of cuboid minus volume of cylinder. This is the water that is still remaining in the cuboid after we have filled in the cylindrical volume. Upon the volume of the cuboid, this will be the ratio. The cuboidal tank will still remain with water. It was extremely simple thing. Then we have applied. Then we have put on the volume of cuboid is length into breadth into height, and volume of the cylinder is pi r square h. A very simple question. So this question, this was asked in 2018. It is saying. There are 24 equally spaced points lying on the circumference of a circle. What are the maximum number of equilateral triangles that can be drawn by taking set of three points as the vertices? I'll repeat this question again. There are 24 equally spaced points lying on the circumference of a circle. What is the maximum number of equilateral triangles that can be drawn by taking a set of three points as the vertices? So this is a little bit what I can say on a tougher side. Here, it, uh, here we are saying about thing is uh, we have equally spaced 24 points on a circular circumference and out of the circumference we have to take three points in a set forming an equilateral triangle and how many unique equilateral triangle can be formed from these 24 equally spaced points right this is a little bit tough question but still it's very easy i'll show how how to do this thing let us imagine we have we are taking this topmost point and other two point lies somewhere in the circumference and this is one of the equilateral triangle we have formed. Now we have to uh, find how many such equilateral triangle, unique equilateral triangle we can form from this 24 sets of points. Right? So using the properties of equilateral triangle what we can do over here is this is this is uh, more about this question is more uh, focused on geometry so here we are focusing on angles of equilateral triangle 
some bisection of equilateral triangle and using the properties of angle we will find how many unique triangles we can form so let's see how we'll do this thing we know that the inequilateral triangle all the three sides are equal and all the three angles are also equal and all the and the angles of an equilateral triangle is pi by 3 or 60 degrees and if we join any chord from the vertice of the equilateral triangle to this center of the equilateral triangle then this chord will bisect this angle this angle right so this thing is pi by 6 because this chord this chord uh, joining this edge to the center is bisecting this angle and the angle is pi by 3 so this will be half of this angle so this is pi by 6 similarly by symmetry this is also pi by 6 right so we get these two angles as pi by 6 and we know that some of the interior angles of a triangle is pi pi or 180 degree so using that property this is pi by 6 this is pi by 6 so this has to be uh, pi minus pi by 3 that is 2 pi by 3 so this is 2 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 or 20 degree, 120 degrees this angle is 120 degrees now we know that we have to find two sets of points such that these two points subtend an angle of 2 pi by 3 to the center a very simple thing so i'll start start from again i'll start this thing whole again but we have done till the uh, till this point is we have taken three different points on this uh, set of 24 points that are on the circumference of a circle so these three points we have to select three points such that these three points forms an equilateral triangle and we have to find how many unique such equilateral triangle we can form using the property of equilateral triangle we got to know that the angle interior angle of equilateral triangle is 60 degrees or pi by 3 and if we join the center of uh, this circle with the edge of a triangle then this chord will be the bisector of this interior angle of equilateral triangle so we know that since the complete angle is pi by 3 so the bisector will make with the this uh, vertex of the triangle this angle will be the half of the angle of this equilateral triangle so this angle is pi by 6 and this one is also pi by 6 by, due to symmetry so we know that in this triangle the two interior angles are pi by 6 and pi by 6 or 30 degrees each so the third angle of this triangle has to be 2 pi by 3 or 120 degrees since the sum of the interior angles of triangle is 180 degrees right so till uh, till here everything is clear now what we will do this we have to find the set of two points such that these two points subtend an angle of 2 pi by 3 to this center of the circle this is our first uh, point selection of this this is the first one selected and the other two points corresponding to this point such that all three form an equilateral triangle will be such that these two other points subtend an angle of 2 pi by 3 to the center and this is extremely simple thing since we know that complete angle subtended in a triangle uh, this thing a circle is 2 pi and we have 24 such points this means this two adjacent points will subtend an angle of 2 pi by 24 right since all the points are equidistant so angle of any uh, angle of any two adjacent points will be same so simply dividing 2 pi by 24 so this will be pi by 12 and this is the angle any two adjacent points will subtend on the center of the circle right so we have to find how many points will become when we have to subtend an angle of 2 pi by 3 simply we have to do we have to divide r2 pi by 3 that is the total angle by the angle that any two points subtend of this pi by 2 and this is nothing but 8 right so what we have got here the difference between these two points is 8 or we can say we have 8 different points in between and then these two points will be subtending an angle of 2 pi by 3 or 120 degree on the center similarly by symmetry this is also 8 and this is also 8 right so ab itna karke humne finally kya bola if we have to take any three point such that three points will form an equilateral triangle so the equi uh, any selection of three points will be such that these points will be a eighth position on the left and eighth position on the right of the first point right agar ye hamara first point hai let us say this is a this is our first point then we have to shift eight points to the rightward to get our second point let us say the second point is b and we have to shift eight point to the leftward to get our third point and the third point will be c right 
then these three points a b and c will surely form an equilateral triangle on this circle so till so till uh, till this time we have came to this conclusion ab now humko kya karna hai now we have to find how many such unique sets of three points we can find such that unique equilateral triangle can be formed on this circle so this is our first equilateral triangle and the simple formula we have uh, arrived at is we have to take three points is a gap of eight different things right pehle humne a liya fir usme humne eight point right mein shift kiya eight point left mein shift kiya then we go to the other two points and this is our set of three points then we will take this another point a a dash fir hum eight i uh, eight idhar shift karenge eight idhar shift karenge and similarly we have seven such other unique points that can represent a iske baad kya hoga iske baad the repetition will start so the this point after the eighth uh, eighth point of a if we start with this point so again we will getting the same triangle so that will not be a unique triangle right it means in total we have eight such unique equilateral triangle that can be formed by 24 such points which are equidistantly positioned on a circle so the answer here is c 8 this was i'll say not a very simple question but here we have to use some geometry some basic properties of a triangle and some basic properties of a circle to get to this answer puri cheez main ek baar dobara bol deta hu we have started with we have an circle and we have 24 equidistant points placed on the circumference of the circle now we have to select three points out of this 24 set such that when we connect these three points we will get an equilateral triangle and the question is asking us how many such possible equilateral triangle we can form unique equilateral triangle we can form so what we have done over here is we have taken some random point a now we have to find which is set b c will be there such that a b c is an equilateral triangle so we found out that this angle is pi by 6 this angle is pi by 6 and the this angle that bc is subtending on the center is 2 pi by 3 or 120 degrees so we came to a conclusion if the two points subtend an angle of 120 degrees then we can say this three points will be an equilateral triangle then after that we uh, calculated and we found out if we take points with a gap of eight difference point in between them right it means b and c are eight units apart from each other then only this b and c points will subtend an angle of 2 pi by 3 or 120 degrees to the center and since there are in total 24 such points so we can say all these three points a b and c are eight units separated from each other so we are saying if we select any three points on this circle which are eight unit away from each other then these three points have to construct an equilateral triangle right a very simple thing then we have calculated since uh, starting with this point if this is a and if we move leftward one 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 unit so we have eight such possibility of a so that an equilateral triangle can be formed a unique equilateral triangle after the eight position the position of a and the position of b will coincide so again we will start with the same equilateral triangle uske baad fir repetition shuru ho jayega fir humko uske baad equilateral triangles mil milenge so it means we have eight such unique equilateral triangle that we can form out of this 24 set a uh, not a very simple question but a doable question right so next question so this was asked in 2020 and this is a very simple question it is saying consider the following statements the minimum number of points of intersection of a square and circle is 2 the maximum number number of points of intersection of a square and circle is 8 which of the following statements are correct a very very simple question so let us uh, see the first statement which is saying the minimum number of points of intersection of a square and circle is 2 kya ye sahi hai so if we take a square here and if we draw a circle very away from this we can clearly see there is no point of intersection obviously there can be two figures with no points of intersection when they place two figures very far apart from each other so this is a completely wrong statement the minimum point of intersection of a square and circle is 0 and the second statement is maximum number of point of intersection of a square and circle is 8 so let us see let us imagine this is a square and if we construct a circle such that it crosses every edge of the square exactly twice so this is the maximum possible intersection a square and circle can have and we can see that there are eight such points of intersection here right so at maximum a square and circle can have eight points of intersection 
second statement is absolutely correct so what we got here is first statement is wrong and second statement is correct so the answer is b2 only a very very simple question yeah so this is the next question this was also asked in 2020 it is saying let x and y be the volume m and m be the mass of the two metallic cubes p and q respectively each side of q is two times of p and mass of q is two times that of p let u be this uh, there is some expression we are defining u by some expression and we are defining v by some expression so then we have to find the relation between u and v a relatively simple question i'll read the question again let x and y be the volumes and m and n be the masses of two metallic cubes p and q respectively and then we have given a relation between the mass and the uh, length of p and q the side of q is two times that of side of p and mass of q is two times that of mass of p and the expression of u and v is given and now we have to find a relation between u and v a very simple question by using this first relation it is said it is saying that each side of q is two times that of p it means side q is two times that of side p and obviously volume q is also eight times volume p since obviously volume is equal to a cube using the formula that volume of a cube is a cube we can say volume of q is eight times the volume of p side of q is two times side of p and volume is eight times volume of p. and we have given the volumes are x and y so we can write y is equal to 8x this is the first relation right and the second a relation we have been provided is mass of q is two times that of mass of p mass of i'll write it over here mass of q is two times that of mass of p and we know that mass of q is this these are the masses n is equal to 2m this is the second relation now putting the value in the expression u is m by x and v is n by y so dividing this thing v u by v is equal to m by x divided by n by y simplifying this thing we will get y by n m by n y by x using this relation m by n is half and y by x is equal to 8 it is a very simple thing if we shuffle this equation we will get y by x is equal to 8 and we when we reshuffle this equation we will get m by n is equal to half right so u by v initially what we have started with u by v is equal to this thing 4 this is our final relation between u and v and reshuffling this relation we will get u is equal to 4v so this is the relation that equate u and v so the option a that is u is equal to 4v is correct so the answer of this thing is u is equal to 4v this is also a very simple question is to kuch nahi karna the only thing that we have applied over here is the volume of cube a cube is a cube and then we have given many such relation between mass and the volume we have written all the different uh, relations and that we have then we have put the relation in the given expression to find the final relation between u and v right isko ek baar pura dobara bol deta hu main we have been provided with the two conditions uh, we have two different metallic cubes p and q and here we have provided with the condition that side length of q is twice to the side length of p and the volume of obviously a cube so we can directly write the volume of q is eight time volume of p right this is our first relation between the volumes of p and q and we given that y is the volume of q and x is the volume of p so the relation between the volume is this thing y is equal to 8x this is our first relation and second thing we have been provided us provided is mass of q is twice that of mass of p and we know that masses are m and n so we can write over is mass of q that is n is equal to two times mass of m mass of p that is m so second relation is n is equal to 2m then we are provided with two expression that uh, that gives the intrinsic value of u and v so dividing this thing u by v 
we get m by x divided by n by y. Reshuffling this expression, we get m by n multiplied by y by x. This is u by v. And using the initial conditions that we have got, m by n is equal to half and y by x is equal to 8. So this initial relation that is u by v is equal to 8 by 2. And this is 4. Right. So from this we get u by v is equal to 4 or u is equal to 4v. Hence our relation between u and v established as u is equal to 4v. This is our answer a u is equal to 4v. Right. I hope everything is clear. This is a relatively simpler topic of CSAT. Here we just have to know the, all the formula and we have uh, in the one, one of these questions, this was a very interesting question. Here expect from the formulas of the menstruation, we have to, uh, we have to apply some basic uh, concepts of geometry, some basic concepts of angles of equilateral triangle and some properties of circle. Other than this, the topic of menstruation is extremely simple. We just need to, uh, need to know the formulas and we have to apply this to come to the final answers. Thank you.